Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. The objective of today's video is to help you purchase a Z490 motherboard. Incredibly, there are over 50 different Z490 motherboards on the market today with prices ranging anywhere from $150 all the way up to $1,300 US. And in my opinion, there are just way too many different models. And that does make buying a Z490 motherboard a bit of a daunting task. This video is intended to simplify the process. And in doing so, it does overlook a rather large swath of Z490 motherboards. Now, the primary goal here is to help you avoid any bad boards, which are often found in the entry level, mini ITX and micro ITX segments. So this is where we'll focus. That said, I also have a best mid-range option, which sees us look at boards priced around $200 US, but beyond that, boards priced between $200 and $400 have been largely ignored. And this is because there aren't really any bad boards here. They all feature very capable VRMs. So it's really just about picking your desired price point and then comparing the three or four boards that occupy that segment based on the features that you require. For example, the Gigabyte Z490 Aorus Ultra and MSI Meg Z490 Unify, they both cost $300 US. They both feature monstrous VRMs. Uh, MSIs would probably be a bit better, but at that point, it really doesn't matter which way you go. Both are overkill, even for an overclocked Core i9 10900K. Gigabyte's gone with a flashier design, while MSI's Unify range is more minimalistic, again, with an emphasis on VRM performance. And when it comes to features, they're both stacked with pretty much all the same gear. I guess what I'm trying to say here is there's no bad or wrong option. We're very much splitting hairs at this point. So let's start with the best value entry-level Z490 category. In other words, what's the cheapest Z490 motherboard you should buy? Actually, let's narrow that down a little bit further to the cheapest ATX motherboard because there's a really nice $150 MATX board that we'll look at in the micro ATX category. The best budget ATX boards include the ASUS Prime Z490-P and the MSI Z490-A Pro, and in terms of VR and performance, they're both surprisingly good. Now, you might expect all Z series boards to handle all K SKU processors, but that's rarely the case, especially if you plan on overclocking. But both these ASUS and MSI boards handled the Core i9 10900K at 5.1 GHz with ease. As for features, they are pretty sparse, but that's not unusual for Z490 motherboards priced around $160 US. As for which one you should purchase, well, as far as I can tell, there's nothing wrong with either option. They're both excellent and very evenly matched. So my advice is to go with whichever model is cheaper in your region or whichever you prefer the look of. Maybe you prefer the ASUS BIOS, for example. As for boards to avoid in this price range, the Gigabyte Z490M Gaming X and Z490UD are both very subpar when it comes to VRM quality and struggle to handle the overclocked K-SKU parts. In fact, they'll actually fail to pass core heavy workloads with the 10700K and 10900K. But if they are available at much lower prices than the ASUS and MSI boards just mentioned, then they would be decent value pairings with a Core i5-10600K. Just note your upgrade path may be limited. As for boards that you should avoid at all costs, they include the ASRock Z490 Phantom Gaming 4, the Z490 Pro 4, the Z490M Pro 4, and even really the Z490 Steel Legend. Though I am hoping ASRock can fix the Steel Legend with a BIOS update that increases the board's power limits. Uh, basically, the board throttles the VRM before it should. So to reiterate, if you're after an affordable Z490 board that can overclock K-SKU parts without breaking a sweat, you want to be looking at either the ASUS Prime Z490P or the MSI Z490A Pro. Now, if you've got a little bit more money to spend, you can get some really nice boards for up around $200 US. From day one, a standout option for me, which was featured on our early 10th gen coverage, was the MSI Mag Z490 Tomahawk. Priced at $190 US, it really is a great quality motherboard. In our testing, the Z490 Tomahawk peaked at just 74 degrees running the Core i9-10900K clocked at 5.1 GHz using 1.35 volts. So you don't need to spend big money to get the most out of Intel's new 10-core processor, despite the fact that it is extremely power hungry when overclocked. That said, MSI has gone with a dozen 55 amp power stages on the Tomahawk for a combined 660 amp capacity. MSI has also included massive heat sinks, which weigh a combined 393 grams. The MSI Z490A Pro, for example, comes with 237 grams worth of heat sinks. 
You also get some nice features such as 2.5 gigabit LAN, USB 3.2 Gen 2 times 2 for 20 gigabits per second support, and a few extra USB ports when compared to the cheaper boards. As a side note, I also have the Gigabyte Z490 Aorus Elite in house and have fully tested that board and found it to be very good. But at the same price as the Tomahawk, I do prefer the MSI board. And the same is also true for the ASUS Tough Gaming Z490 Plus. Overall, another good board, but I feel for roughly the same price, the Tomahawk just offers a bit more. Having said all that, the Gigabyte Z490 Vision G might be worth considering over the Tomahawk for two reasons. Firstly, at $200, it's the only Z490 board in this price range to offer three full length PCIe times 16 slots. Though do note only the primary slot is wired for full time 16 bandwidth, as all LGA 1200 processors simply don't support enough PCIe lanes. The secondary slot is wired for times eight bandwidth, and when in use, the primary slot will be limited to times eight bandwidth as well. Then the third slot is wired for times four bandwidth. The Vision G also offers two extra USB 3.2 ports on the IO panel, though it does drop the gigabit network port, but retains 2.5 gigabit LAN. In terms of VRM performance, the Vision G is roughly on par with the Tomahawk. So with just $10 separating the two, it'll come down to your configuration preferences. Micro ATX is a form factor that almost seems forgotten when it comes to AMD motherboards, but it is still quite active on the Intel side. And when it comes to Z490 Micro ATX motherboards, there are at least five options right now that come from ASRock, ASUS, Gigabyte, and MSI. Unfortunately though, the ASRock Z490M Pro 4 uses the same atrocious VRM as the Phantom Gaming 4, so you can give that board a hard pass. The Gigabyte Z490M Gaming X also uses the same VRM as the Z490UD, so unless you're very desperate, I'd also recommend avoiding that board. And that leaves us with the ASUS Prime Z490M Plus at $150 US. And while not our outright best MATX board, and we'll get to that in a moment, I am happy to report that this is a rather good quality board. The V-Core portion of the VRM packs eight 50 amp power stages configured as a teamed four phase. I actually grabbed this board and gave it a quick test as I was quite interested in how it performed and the results are quite impressive. It runs around four degrees hotter than the ASUS Prime Z490P and that means with a Core i5-10600K overclocked to five gigahertz with 1.35 volts, you're looking at a peak operating temperature for the VRM of about 66 degrees, which is very reasonable in a well-ventilated case in a 21 degree climate. Of course, like the Prime Z490P, the Micro ATX version is extremely limited when it comes to features, but that's just par for the course when it comes to entry-level Z490 motherboards. If you're after better networking and a flashier looking board, then the MSI MPG Z490M Gaming Edge Wi-Fi is worth checking out. Though I find the $190 US asking price a bit much for a board packing the same VRM found on the Z490A Pro. Now, if you're after the absolute best, best of the best when it comes to micro ATX Z490 motherboards, then look no further than the ASUS ROG Strix Z490G Gaming Wi-Fi at $240. It really does it all. The board packs a dozen 45 amp power stages for the V-Core portion of the VRM with some rather large heat sinks. So it'll have no trouble overclocking the Core i9-10900K even with minimal airflow. In terms of features, the board's quite well equipped with half a dozen USB 3.2 ports on the IO panel, including a USB Type-C port, and there's also a BIOS flashback button as well. On board, you still get two M.2 slots, two PCIe Time-16 slots, six SATA ports, and four memory DIMMs. Okay, so who makes the best mini ITX Z490 motherboard? Well, brace yourself, none of the options worth your hard-earned cash are particularly affordable, all priced up around $270 to $300 US. Of the four boards worth considering, I'd lean towards the Gigabyte Z490i Aorus Ultra or the MSI Z490i Unify. Both cost $270 US. The more expensive ASUS ROG Strix Z490i Gaming, it's also quite a good quality board, but it does feature a more crammed CPU socket, which can cause problems with cooler compatibility. And of course, it also costs $30 more. 
The ASRock Z490 Phantom Gaming ITX is also quite a good board, but it does suffer from the same CPU compatibility problems as the ASUS board. In fact, it's actually a little bit worse in that regard, and it also costs slightly more than the MSI and Gigabyte models. As for which board you should pick out of the MSI Z490i Unify and Gigabyte Z490i Aorus Ultra, it's another one of those situations where they're both so evenly matched that you really can't go wrong with either option. Uh, personally though, I'd lean towards the Gigabyte board for the extra USB ports on the IO panel. Those always come in handy. And it also has a slightly better board layout that doesn't see some of the SATA ports oddly positioned. Admittedly, it's all pretty minor stuff, but that's what gets the Z490i Aorus Ultra over the line for me. Now, if for some reason you want the most extreme Z490 motherboard money can buy without going down the water cooling monoblock path, then there are three very expensive options. We have the MSI Z490 Godlike, the Gigabyte Z490 Aorus Extreme, and then there's the ASUS ROG Maximus 12 Extreme, which I've actually left the box up there because I've kind of run out of room. And if you're after a no compromise type solution, then in my opinion, you want MSI's Godlike. Mind you, $750 US is an absurd price to pay for any Z490 motherboard, at least in my opinion, but that's exactly how much these extreme models cost. The board packs 16 90 amp power stages that are cooled by real fin heat sinks with active cooling. But unless you're pulling off an extreme of the most extreme overclocks, then I don't imagine the fans will get any chance to spin up. On board features include, well, everything, 10 gigabit LAN, you also get 2.5 gigabit LAN just because, three M.2 slots, two Thunderbolt 3 type C 40 gigabits per second ports, Intel Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.1, eight channel audio, and well, the list goes on. Hell, the board even features an OLED panel, which MSI has dubbed Dynamic Dashboard 2. There's loads more to talk about with this motherboard, but I think you guys get the point. If for some reason you need a motherboard that costs more than the Core i9 10900K, this is the one to get. Okay, so those are my key Z490 motherboard picks. And like I said at the start of the video, there is a absolutely ridiculous amount of Z490 motherboards on the market. And we have over half of them. So that's, it. well, it is a lot of motherboards. It's over 25, but as I said, there's more than 50 of them. And there are a heap of boards priced between, let's say 220 and $400 US that we didn't talk about in this video. And that's largely because there are really no bad options there. There are certainly some that are a little bit better than others in terms of features and stuff. But as I said, if you want to spend $300, then there'll only be a few options there that you can compare and work out what ones have the type of networking you want and things like that. But in terms of VRM thermals, you need not worry. And I'd say overall with perhaps the exception of ASRock, all the motherboard makers have put quite a bit of time and effort into developing and putting out their Z490 motherboards. So that makes it a bit easier to pick a board. As I said, it, it's rare that you can go wrong at any price range picking between one of these brands. Unfortunately though, I can't really recommend ASRock at any of these price points. And I have to say that is a first for us. But getting back to the boards priced above the Tomahawk and the Vision G, Basically, look at those boards at each price range, compare the features, and then work out what you need, and you can work your way up the product stack that way. So it's, in a lot of cases, there's probably no need to spend $400. You'll probably find that the $300 or less boards have all the features you need. And again, boards priced north of $200 uh, are excellent in terms of VRM quality, so that really should not be a concern. Anyway, that is going to do it for this video, and that is really going to do it for our Z490 coverage. We've provided quite a few videos now covering all these boards, and really this is our summary of all that testing and what we think of comparing the boards in terms of features and all price and all that sort of stuff. So hopefully by this point, you know what board is right for you, or we've at least helped you narrow down the selection from the well, you wouldn't have been looking at all 50 boards, but there'd still be quite a few you'd be looking at, and hopefully we've made that process a little bit quicker and easier. But other than that, that is really going to do it for our Z490 coverage on the channel. I think we're done with this one. As I said, I'm not going to bother doing VRM thermal performance for the more expensive boards because they're all going to handle an overclocked 10, well, yeah, the 10 core 20 uh, thread part with ease. So there's really no point doing that testing. Uh, and we don't really do extreme overclocking, so you're best off going to someone like Buildzoid for that information. You're going to get uh, a much more accurate recommendation from him when it comes to extreme overclocking. Um, but yeah, like, 
Subscribe if you'd like to. Uh, if you're interested in AMD B550 motherboards, there'll be a hell of a lot of testing coming up on the channel over the next few weeks as we can finally get boards there. Slowly trickling in, pre-orders and stuff will be uh, fulfilled over the next few weeks. So that testing should be pretty interesting. But yeah, other than that, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again next time. <laughs>